Good morning, my name is Camelo. Uh, I've got 12 minutes to work this out, so I hope you brought your intellectual spandex. 500 years ago, we were certain that we were the center of the universe, and Galileo came along, Copernicus, they took that away from us. A couple hundred years after that, we were still certain that we had, God had a special plan for us, um, that we were at the top of a great chain of being, and that we were just below the angels but far above the animals. And Darwin came along and he ripped that out from under us. Shortly after him, there was uh, Freud, of course, and he dropped the, uh, the bomb that we didn't even know who we were ourselves, that there was a subconscious, and we couldn't even be sure of that. Um, after him, of course, you have Nietzsche. He told us, God is dead. There can be no right and wrong without God. If God's dead, who's going to tell us what's right? and Who's going to tell us what's wrong? And him, following him, uh, the last one on the list is Einstein, of course. And Einstein let us know definitively that there was no place in this universe that we could measure ourselves from. Everything was relative. To know where you are, you have to know where everything else is. And this has left us in a rather uncertain age. Uh, all of us carry uncertainty around with ourselves, thinking about what we're going to do with our lives. It's a daily thing, and it's kind of the subject of our, our TED Talks today. What should we do? You know, we have this energy humana. What should we do with it? It's an age-old philosophical question. And, of course, the associated question, why should we do what we do do? Because something about that power, there should be something about that power, that human energy that we have, that somehow lets us know that what we do is right. And right now, we don't have that. So, my approach to this problem uh, was through history. And history uh, informs everything we do, um, as our previous speaker was generous to show us, enough to show us. History is one of those things that uh, we take for granted, and it's on many levels. I'd like to start with two levels. The first one uh, is, of course, our genes. All of us are made, built by genes, but we don't really know, most of us don't really know that our genes are the history of successful transformations for all of our ancestors. They kind of record what has happened and how it was successful over the last four billion years that those genes have been reproducing to produce us. On another level, our brains, when we're born, massively interconnect themselves. The neurons just connect to everything, and as you go through life, as you learn, some of those connections are reinforced. Most of them die off. And what you're left with is a trained brain. You learn to walk, you learn to write, you learn to um, navigate social situations. Um, and these are both ways that we access our history, access the history of the universe. And so when we talk about something like, what are we going to do? What should we do? You know, where are we? Who are we? These kind of things. For me, this story starts a long time ago, you know? It starts with the beginning of the universe. For 13 billion years now, since the Big Bang, the universe has been winning order. It's been creating order. And each of you, all of us, are uh, made of that order. From our quantum systems, which emerged almost immediately after the Big Bang, to our molecular systems, which emerged somewhat later, uh, after the atoms were formed, to once the molecular systems came together to a, into massive nebula, they started having mass, and that mass brought them together with gravity and made our astronomical systems, and all those three together at this location in the universe, which is relative, but the one we're in, uh, at this location, came together to make the first life out of the same kind of... Um, process. The, the Earth, when it first formed four billion years ago, had a surface that was massively interactive. The same sense that the, after the Big Bang, the elementary particles were massively interactive. And from that interaction was selected a very small set of synchronous interaction. Most interaction is not synchronous. A small set of it was synchronous. After the Big Bang, the first synchronous systems, the first systems that worked together, that cooperated, were, uh, of course, quarks and gluons making the protons and neutrons, which went on to start cooperating, uh, or synchronizing, you could say, with electrons. And in the same way on our Earth here, uh, we came together. Uh, there was, a, there was uh, molecular cells and those molecules which were mixing on the surface of the Earth, and they were mixing in many different ways due to many different kinds of levels of organized interaction. And a few of them, very few of them, just one set became the first cells, bacteria. And those bacteria reproduced, they covered the earth, and of course, 
as they started reproduce or interacting with, them, with each other, some small set of those interactions were also synchronous. They were also coordinated. They were also cooperative. And life has uh, kind of proceeded like that. Since, since then, it's been uh, a series of things coming together to produce new things. And these new things are exclusively, in every case, communal. Here you have an atom, and that atom is going to move on to, eventually, uh, a carbon atom. But eventually it's going to move on to uh, molecules, which are just groups of atoms. And in the same sense, you're, the cells that you're made of, the cells that I'm made of, are groups of cooperative cells since the, from the beginning of time. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about how that process happened. What is the context in which that process happens so that order is one from the universe? Because this is maybe 20 slides here, and these are examples in historical order of different levels of uh, emergence throughout time in our universe. And we kind of, I presume we want to be part of that. I presume we don't want to just interact and then disappear. And that presumption kind of gives us a baseline for what is good out there. What we want to do is survive. At a basic level, we'd like to survive. We'd like to pro propagate human order into the future. And to know how to do that, you have to look at the history of how order was generated. Uh, and almost exclusively, well, exclusively in this history, this order was communal. Every level that has emerged has been communal. And every level, and that community is built through relationships. Everything that you know that physically you can put your finger on or that you know physically exists is made of relationships. Ex excluding possibly the elementary particles, but those are in question. Um, and those relationships have one thing in common. All of those relationships that, that compose you, they're all persistent. They've persisted since the beginning of time and they continue to persist. And if any of them failed, you would die. If quantum systems all of a sudden failed to work, all of us would just disintegrate. If molecular systems of chemistry failed to work, we would disappear. These things have been maintained, these levels of order have been maintained, and we're the result of those levels of order, and we have the opportunity now to move on on those levels of order. But how, what, are the, what is the context? How is, the, how is that order created? I propose three basic conditions or contexts within which every one of these emergent systems has come to being. The first one is communication. There absolutely has to be an environment of massive interaction. And from that environment is sampled uh, synchronous interaction. And what we're interested in, what the, part of the, the parts of the universe that we find interesting that we're made of, are those synchronous unions. And those synchronous unions, I call them cooperation right now because it's an accessible word. But cooperation just means synchrony, which means order through time. They maintain order through time. And what we would like to do is, I contend, is to maintain order through time. Um, and the most important of the three, so far we have an environment of communication, it's necessary. The second was from that environment needs to be selected cooperative arrangements. And the third, last, and most important one is reproduction. And I'm not talking about sex here. I'm talking about uh, relationships that last. These relationships, for them to last in an entropic universe, and entropy just means that things fall apart. They always fall apart. If things are falling apart, there needs to be a process which counterbalances that, and they need to continually reproduce atoms. For us to be here now, atoms have to be continually reproduced at a bottom level, at a historic level, for us to be here now. So the three important contexts for this process are communication, cooperation, and reproduction. What does that mean for us here, right now? I'd like to take a real quick stab at the four questions that were asked uh, as the kind of the context of this TED Talks. The first one is what is the nature of our power as humans? There's no way that we can look at our power as humans as not being communal. A lot of us love to think of ourselves as individuals and there's nothing wrong with that, but we also need to contextualize ourselves as a community. If we're going to persist, our community must be built and it must be cooperate and it must um, reproduce. And when I say reproduce, what I mean is ideas, essentially. Uh, we reproduce just fine physically, but what we do that's unique that nothing else does is reproduce ideas, as they're memes to some who know. Um, second question, what, what are the responsibilities that come with this power? If we're going to come together to do something, what are we responsible for? And I think uh, when you ask responsibility, you have to ask who are you responsible for? And in my case, and I hope you share my opinion, our responsibility is to ourselves. What we want to the kind of order we want to propagate in this universe is human order. And that human order is, uh, is ideas, and it's the way we come together to form new organizations. 
Uh, and what is our legacy going to be? Well, there's only two options, <laughs> extinction or survival. And I choose survival. I hope we all choose survival. But to do that, we have to go through this process of communicating, and we have to select that communication. There's a good kinds of communication and bad kind of communication. Good communication leads to cooperative arrangements, cooperative systems. Good cooperative systems lead to reproductive systems. Every speaker here has, produces, um, some kind of organized, systemic, cooperative event. And they produce something that hopefully each of them wants to reproduce. They want their movies to go on and be seen again. They want to inspire other people. They want their products to be bought. They want these things to happen. So there's a, there's a hierarchy of value here. Uh, communication is important. We all should communicate. But that communication which leads to cooperation should be valued. And that cooperation which leads to reproduction should be valued. Um, the last question, of course, oh, absolutely critical, is if we are going to die, there's only one way to avoid it. There's, uh, there's one rule in this universe, and that's transformation. It's change. Absolutely nothing stays the same. Nothing ever will. Nothing ever has. There's a graphic that I think got mixed up in there of the extinctions of the last half billion years. There's six or seven of them. They come around regularly. They're absolutely unavoidable, and they go right through to the four billion years of our history. The earth changes. We're adapted to this earth right now. When it changes, what are we going to do? You know, when it changes, because if we don't mess the bed, some, it's going to get messed. So when you think about this, there's really, the result of that is, the only way that these animals, there you go, the only way that the animals, all these, the, at least the, the, the forms of life have survived over the years is by radiating throughout the whole biosphere. When you radiate through the whole biosphere, it doesn't matter how many of them that get killed, some of them survive and they go on to reproduce the next level of organization in the biosphere. And that's what we need to think about. If we're going to survive, we must radiate. It doesn't need to be today, but we need to start thinking about an absolute good. And that absolute good is getting off this planet, getting somewhere where we can avoid its fate. It will change and it will die. That's something that I don't think anybody can argue. Of course, preserving it is good, but it's, it's impossible. Last question, of course, how do we use our energia humana, our human energy? And uh, in my opinion, there's one way that we can, there's many ways you can, all of us can imagine ways that we can use it. But there's one historical truth that comes out of this, and that historical truth and kind of a guiding light that we could use for our lives is to maintain communication. And we're doing this. I don't know if there's an, a, a, a graphic of a, I think there is a graphic of the world as it's connected by internet on there. But maintain that communicative environment, and from that communicative environment, select for cooperative arrangements. Everybody here selects, has selected for cooperative arrangements. Everybody out here produces something, whether it's through time, reading books or music or listening to music, or with their individuals, the people they work with right now. Um, so communication, if you come away from anything with this, with anything from this, communicate. Select that communication for cooperation and select that cooperation so that it can reproduce, so that you can produce something that is sustainable. Those are, import, those are universal qualities. It's a universal rule for successful emergence. Um, and ultimately, it has a lot to do with TED Talks. I mean, these are the, the ideas worth spreading. Thank you.